In this video, we will talk about how to do a move-in. To do a move-in, you're going to click on Operations and then the Move-In button. In the first screen, you see a list of all of your vacant units. You can scroll down and highlight a unit and click Next, or you can view your sizes on the right-hand side. In this particular database, we have 64 vacant units. If I wanted to look at my 10x10s, I could click on 10x10 on the right-hand side, and now I'm looking at the two 10x10s that are available, as opposed to viewing vacant units as a whole and viewing all 64. Click on a unit, and then click on Next, and we get to our second section. Typically, you're going to click on the Add button, click Add, and fill in all the relevant information. Name, address, city, state, zip, email, phone number, and whatever other items that you want to fill in. In this particular database, it's only requiring us to have our first name and last name and email. In your particular database, typically you would have more fields that would be required. To set up your default fields, you would go to Company, Setup, Tenant Defaults, and whatever is checked as a default will show in green on the move-in. If I was to finalize putting in a new tenant, I would click OK. We also have the option to choose from an existing tenant. The default list is current tenants. These are all of your current tenants listed here. And or you could choose all past and current tenants and see all of your past and current tenants on this list. If we're in the current tenant view, I could scroll down and find my tenant or search for that respective person. If I was looking for Ron, for example, I would type in Ron. It would find every example of a tenant with Ron as their name or Ron as part of their name. If I double click on the tenant, now that tenant is associated with this move-in and they will be linked in terms of the payment screen. If I had added Ron in this example as a new tenant, it would not recognize that it was the same Ron Paul that was initially moved in. So it's very important that if you're going to be moving in a tenant into a second or third unit that you choose their name from the list as opposed to adding them as a new tenant. Once we've chosen our unit and once we've chosen our tenant or added a new tenant, we're in the final screen. You will have your default as either first of the month or anniversary. If your anniversary date billing, there will be no proration. If your first of the month billing, you can have a proration set up in your defaults under program defaults. In this example, I'm going to choose anniversary and it's saying this tenant currently rents other units. Would you like to synchronize this unit's anniversary billing date? The other unit is due on the 18th. It's not the 18th on the day that I'm recording, if I wanted to synchronize the date, it is going to make a proration and then going to be on the 18th of every month going forward. You'll see different billing types. Typically, you would be on monthly billing, but you have choices from daily up to annually. It defaults to today's start date. Depending on your settings, you could have a past or future date. Know that if you change the date from the default, that can affect historical reporting. You'd have different billing options in terms of whether or not you never tax rent. Is someone tax exempt? Do you send an invoice, charge an invoice fee? These are all arbitrary depending on how you do business. When do you send your invoice? A typical day to send an invoice prior to when someone would be charged would be 15 days before. You could change this per tenant. If you had a company, for example, that wants to be invoiced 30 days prior, you could change this number to be 30. We then have the document delivery section. You can choose what the default is in terms of how you're going to interact with this tenant. There's many companies that, as a rule, want to email their customers because it's no cost. You could choose this person as email. Then the next person that's moved in, you could choose them as print, or print and email, or mail service, or any combination thereof. When you, for example, process an invoice, it would know person A is to be emailed, person B is to be printed and emailed, person C is to be just printed, depending on what your settings are. In the bottom left-hand corner, we could choose our time zone and keypad zone. You can set someone up for auto bill. If we click on edit, we can put in their credit card information and or ACH, depending on what option you want to choose. For monthly automatic billing, normally you would leave the default for zero, meaning they would come up to be charged on their billing date. You may have some tenants that are moved in, let's say on the first, but they want to have their credit card charged on the third. In that example, you could put the auto 
bill on days past due as two, and therefore they will be due on the first, but the credit card will not be charged on the third. You can put in vehicle information. The plus sign beside initial rent allows you to change the tenant's rent to add a discount plan or type in the discount plan or give a percentage discount. This all depends on your settings. You may have it set up in your defaults that you're not able to edit the rent or you're only able to give predefined discount plans. You can add additional months by clicking on the periods. If you allow or have the setting to do so, you could have a security deposit which could be edited. You can add an administrative charge and or discount it. You could sell merchandise, boxes, locks, or whatever merchandise items you have in the system. Double click on the item and now it's added to their account. You could add insurance if enabled. And then you can have up to eight recurring charges on someone's account. A recurring charge would be something, for example, like an extended hours fee. Charging someone to be able to have access to your facility 24 hours a day is something that some facilities charge extra for. There's a shortcuts button in the upper right hand corner. If you're into the middle of a move in and someone else walks in and wants to take a payment, you could click on shortcuts, jump to the payment screen, take your payment, and then come back. You never lose your place. E photos and e files, you can take up to nine photos of a customer. You can take a web camera photo, scan a driver's license, take a picture of their vehicle, whatever photos you'd like to take. Again, up to nine in this area. Once we have our unit chosen, our tenant added or chosen, and we make sure that our charges are correct, we can click on save. Once we click save, it'll ask, are you sure you want to commit this transaction? You'll click on yes. At this point in time, it's talking to our servers. So now your information is on our servers and available to be viewed on any other computer that you have using SiteLink. At this point, we can take a payment and process any leases or forms that we have set up in the move-in section. A typical form would be your lease, a lease summary, credit card authorization form, or insurance sign-up form. At this point we can either print if you do not have e-sign set up or choose the e-sign option to have a paperless lease. Once that is done, click on finish and you now have a completed move-in.